unsafe at any speed. The groundbreaking campaign from the 1960s was the first to highlight that day's poor safety standards of cars. Surviving a car crash 50 or more years ago was something of a lottery. These crash test pictures from the time show how dangerous it was. Legislation and growing consumer pressure forced the big automobile makers to prioritize safety and survivability in their designs increasingly. In the mid-60s, seatbelts became standard equipment for US and European cars. But it wasn't until about 15 years later that their wearing became mandatory. However, since the introduction of seatbelts, it's estimated that in America alone, 500,000 people have had their lives saved in accidents. Crash testing became part of the design process, with manufacturers destroying new vehicles to ensure they were safe on the roads. In the 1970s, governments around the world began to establish their own vehicle safety testing to evaluate new models. The data was used to formulate new regulations for car safety and survivability. In the United States, the non-profit Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is one of the independent organizations worldwide pushing for better vehicle safety. In 1995, we had our first crashworthiness evaluation test. It was a 40 mile per hour frontal crash test. It was very different from what the US federal government was doing, which was a crash test into a flat rigid wall. That type of loading to the vehicle structure isn't very common in the real world. So what we decided to do was challenge the vehicle structure by making an offset test where the front end of the vehicle doesn't engage entirely with a barrier, just 40% of the front end width. When we conducted those tests, you know, the door opening, for example, it was collapsing around the occupant. Toe pans, right, where the accelerator pedal and the brake pedal are located, those were intruding towards the feet. In the real world, that would cause high levels of lower extremity injury. So we introduced that test. Less than 10 years later, all vehicles were performing really well, those compartments were holding up, and the measures that we recorded on the dummy were vastly improved. In the early 2000s, side impact crash tests were introduced. This prompted manufacturers to strengthen the sides of vehicles and install side airbags. Nowadays, every passenger vehicle on sale in the United States comes with side airbags fitted as standard. It's not just survivability that is tested, but also crash avoidance. Tests are conducted to see how a vehicle performs when it has to make a violent avoidance maneuver and how efficient modern sensors are at alerting a driver of danger. The IIHS tests are similar to those performed by organizations worldwide. For a crash test, we take a brand new vehicle that we purchase at a vehicle dealer just like anybody else would. We bring it in-house, we take pre-crash measures of it um, because we want to know how structure deforms. We place instrumentation on the vehicle. We place crash test dummies that are instrumented that record data at very high speeds. So we have sensors in the dummies from head all the way down to the toe that help us uh, record accelerations, forces, displacements of different parts of the body that would indicate different types of injuries. And we record that data at rates of 10,000 samples of data per second per channel. So we're collecting a lot of data in a very short amount of time. We have uh, about a 600 foot long runway. We tie the vehicle down to the propulsion system and more or less when it's test time, we slowly accelerate that vehicle up to test speed. So for a front crash, it would be 40 miles per hour and it, it rolls into our crash hall. All of our cameras in the crash hall are going. We photo document it. At impact point, that triggers our data acquisition system to record the data. And that's it, the crash is over. Almost immediately, that data is uploaded to our network, and we can then start um, getting a better understanding of how the dummy and the vehicle performed in that test. 
Whatever vehicle is being tested, the test dummy is probably the most crucial component in evaluating survivability. The dummy is our human surrogate. It is what we use to, to tell us what the potential of injury to a real human would be. In a typical crash test, we rate several different things. The structure, how much it collapses or, or holds up and protects the occupant safety space, how well the airbags do in controlling the dummy's movement, and how well the airbags and seatbelts do at reducing some of those injuries that we record on the dummy. The evidence shows that current crash testing goes a long way towards simulating the real world. The crash tests that we conduct are really meant to help ensure self-protection in, in a wide range of crash modes. Uh, most of them are car to car, but, but it certainly will help you in a single vehicle crash and our analysis of real world data proves that. It shows that when you perform better in these crash modes, you get benefit across a wide range of crashes in the real world. Our rating scheme goes from good all the way to poor. And when you have a good rated vehicle versus poor in different crash modes, we know um, every time we do this analysis that your real world fatality risk is, is decreased when you have a good rated vehicle. Now, some of our collision avoidance testing um, these are the sensors, the forward-looking radar and cameras that help drivers uh, avoid some of these crashes. They are helpful in vehicle-to-vehicle front-to-rear crashes. They help uh, avoid crashes with pedestrians, cyclists, motorcyclists, and we're now ev evaluating systems on how well they do into the back of tractor trailers, so heavy trucks. Testing by Global NCAP shows how a vehicle's design age and a particular country's regulations can have vastly different outcomes in a collision. Both these vehicles are from the same manufacturer. The white van is an older design that was built locally in Argentina and meets current regulations. The blue is more modern, built to European specs and imported into the same market. When they are involved in a crash test, the results are dramatic. The older white vehicle would fail current European regulations as access to the occupants is hindered by the failure of the door structure. Even though the airbag has been deployed, the driver could have life-threatening injuries. The blue car is a much more stable structure, reducing the chance of injury to the occupants and allowing emergency services easier access to the crash victims. Probably the most anticipated vehicle of recent years has been the Tesla Cybertruck. Almost a year after it went on sale, it still hasn't had an official safety rating from either the US government's National Highway Transportation Safety Agency or the IIHS. These pictures are from Tesla's own crash tests, which some say show it to have safety flaws. However, its low center of gravity appears to make it highly sturdy against a side impact. Other safety agencies will perform the necessary tests only once it goes on sale worldwide. So, could there come a day when vehicle safety regulations are the same across the world? That's a great idea, but when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of it, what tends to happen is folks on both sides say, let's harmonize, and as long as you do what I'm doing, we're great, uh, but you know that that never tends to happen. We do, for better or worse, have right now very different fleets, and so it it may not make sense to harmonize those regulations. Very different fuel economy standards, and and in some cases roadways, and so uh, it would be nice if some of those standards were harmonized. But I'm not holding out hope. Work is ongoing to improve the safety of cars in collision with tractor trailers. With the manufacturers in the US catching up with their European counterparts, some large fleets have adopted underride guards, but small operators are reluctant due to the cost of replacement. The lifespan of an articulated trailer can be 25 years or more. However important the data, the cost of procuring vehicles and running the tests means at the IIHS only four specific crash tests can be done on each vehicle type. Computer modeling may be cheaper, but its accuracy still has to be established compared to the real world. We are, have actually begun a process of 
trying to understand whether we can replace physical testing with computer simulations, virtual models. And that not only allows us to replace the existing testing, but allows us to augment the types of tests and the impact angles and the speeds, many different scenarios that you can't do with just physical testing. One, because you don't have the time or the resources to purchase 10 of each vehicle or 20 of each vehicle. So there is some promise with virtual testing. The problem is, is having enough confidence that those models will give you reliable results that represent what's actually happening in the real world. So it, it's going to be a process to get there and there's going to have to be some certification process and, um, and trust that those models actually do work. These actual vehicle computer models are proprietary information for each manufacturer that makes them. And they know every piece of metal and component that has gone into the vehicle and the characteristics of the foam and, and other plastics and the airbags. They still have to build a, a prototype and validate that it's, it's worked. Right now, these models aren't perfect and there is a lot of human input that's, that's needed. It's possible that as we move forward that there may be some, some AI that, that helps uh, that process along, but uh, as, as far as I can tell, there's going to be a lot of human involvement in the process. And that point about the computer models for vehicles being proprietary to the manufacturers is crucial. Sharing the model is vital if we're to have cheaper and more extensive vehicle crash testing, which in turn will increase the survivability of collisions and ultimately save lives. In the US, the National Safety Council has done some work to quantify how driving has become safer over the years. In 1950, there were seven deaths for every 10,000 motor vehicles on the road. By 2022, it was down to 1.5 deaths, a fall of almost 80%. Over the years, driver attitudes have changed, but it must also be due to better engineering, which can be put down to crash testing to make the roads safer for everyone. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.